Hi everybody, welcome to the 2024 St. Paul Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade presented by Dungarvan. Dungarvan hires people to help others achieve their fullest potential and to maximize their quality of life. They offer an array of opportunities across many states and accept applications for direct support professionals on an ongoing basis. We're excited to have you here today in the balmy north. It is about 36 degrees right now, which is the warmest that any of us can remember a Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade being. Um, I am here, I am Brent LaSalle. I was the Minneapolis Aquatennial Commodore a couple years ago, and uh, I get asked to do this pretty much every year for the last 10, 12 years, and I'm here with a 2015 King Boreas and uh, Queen of the Snows um, to help present this. So on my left, if you are watching on television, I have 2015 King Boreas Dan Stoltz, and on my right, I have the 2015 Aurora Queen of the Snows, Crystal. Uh, Igbo Ogbana. Crystal's interrupting me. <laughs> I was going to Igbo Ogbana. Um, and we're here to talk to you today. So we should be seeing floats coming by probably in 15 15-ish minutes. But uh, we're happy to tell you a few things about Winter Carnival uh, before we get going. And I'm going to ask Dan to. Lay some stuff on us. All right. Hey, thanks, Brent. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, as was mentioned, both Crystal and I were the king and the queen in 2015. So we know all the hype and what this is all about. You know, the fun thing about winning a carnival, it started in 1885, longest running carnival in the United States. And really quick, there's a reporter that came to St. Paul in that year and said, boy, this is another Siberian made fun of Minnesota. And then the, the great uh, chamber at that time said, well, hey, wait a minute, let's, let's embrace winter, let's create the winter carnival. And that carnival started in 1886. So this is a long running festival. And in St. Paul, we love it and we actually embrace winter. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Crystal, every year we get a new royal family. Can you tell us a little bit about the royal family? I can. So the royal family reigns over the St. Paul Winter Carnival each year. Uh, there are many, many members of the royal family because they actually perform a legend. So the Winter Carnival is based off of a legend and we have a story and it's all about the pageantry and the fun. Um, and so you'll see the Winter Carnival royal family come through the parade here in a moment. Um, but there are a lot of really important characters that make up the royal family. So of course, uh, you have the roles of King Boreas and Aurora Queen of the Snows. Uh, they are the leaders of the royal family along with the prime minister who helps coordinate in the story we say coordinate all of the fun and festivities of the 10 days of the festival. Um, the royal family also includes a host of princes. So in the legend we talk about uh, Boreas's brothers and so Boreas has uh, Prince of the North Wind, Titan, Prince of the East Wind, Euros, Prince of the West Wind, Zephyrus, and Prince of the South Wind, Notos. And all of those princes have a princess who accompanies them. Uh, we also have the Order of the Royal Guard, a captain, a sergeant, the King's Guard who protect the royal family uh, from the Vulcan crew. And we also have our Mistress of Song and Merriment, Klondike Kate, who provides all of the uh, wonderful music and celebration of the festival. And of course, we do have the Vulcan crew. Um, although we kind of have this battle between winter and summer, we really are a family. And in the legend, uh, King Boreas and Aurora um, allow summer to come in because just because we love and celebrate winter, we also want to uh, bring in the new seasons as well. So uh, the royal family will see them soon, and it's a really fun way to celebrate the Winter Carnival. You guys got a little bit of a jump start on uh, summer this year. If there are a number of iconic images that go with the St. Paul Winter Carnival, and one of them that we've seen a number of times in the past is the Ice Palace. Shockingly, in a week that we're likely to see 50 to 60 degrees, we don't have one right now. But Dan, can you tell us a little bit about the Ice Palace? Absolutely. You know, the very first Ice Palace was in 1887, and over the years, there's been some tremendous Ice Palaces all throughout St. Paul. Actually, the last Ice Palace was in 2018. Uh, it was right here in Rice Park, right where we're looking out from here. Uh, that was seven stories tall. That had about 6,000 ice blocks carved in one of our beautiful lakes uh, from ice blocks from one of our lakes here in Minnesota. 
but uh, the labor intensity that goes into uh, building an ice palace with the blocks and uh, all the work that needs to get done, it's a huge coordinated project. So about every 10 years you'll see an ice palace. All of us look forward to those because we are right now, we are standing in beautiful Rice Park, which is where they often are. Uh, and it looks like when I said, uh, what did I say, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. It looked like what I really meant was three to four minutes. And the parade is starting and they're going to be coming around the corner in just a moment. But folks, come down to, to Rice Park if you can over the next week. Um, it is really a fun place to be. This is one of the most beautiful spots anywhere in the Twin Cities. Um, the beautiful old buildings, the St. Paul Hotel, the library, which we're in front of right now. Uh, it is just a wonderful place to be. And uh, I don't know about you, Crystal, but I'm getting hungry because I smell cheese curds. But coming around our, the corner right now, I'm going to have Crystal introduce our parade star. Yeah, we are kicking off the 2024 King Boreas Grand Day Parade. Uh, we've got... Uh, our lead police car coming down um, through Rice Park right now, along with uh, some wonderful volunteers who are holding our snowflakes and our banner. Um, fun fact, each of the snowflakes that those folks are carrying weighs 10 pounds. And really, truly, uh, the St. Paul Winter Carnival is made up of volunteers. This festival uh, wouldn't happen without uh, volunteers, the support of the city of St. Paul, and every single person that you see carrying one of those 10 pound snowflakes um, is a volunteer. The folks carrying the banners, letting us know that it is the kickoff of the Grand Day Parade is also a volunteer. And it's really wonderful to have um, volunteers who are so invested in the festival. Volunteerism really is the backbone of this. And it's also the way you're rewarded. Please come down and find a way that you can volunteer. You get to be a part of things that are special, that are different. You meet lots of wonderful people. And yeah, here we can see our snowflakes coming. These another absolute icon of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. And the only place you're likely to see snow in the next couple of weeks. So good to see. Where are they going? We'll have to see what's going on. Uh, That's actually my high school, Brent. Yeah. That uh, Johnson High School there. Uh, taking on the colors of our flag and also the American Legion 4th District. Uh, it says for more than 50 years, the local American Legion in 2002 after 9-11, we were proud to follow behind the police. So um, just absolutely amazing. Always start out our parade with them and seeing the colors for sure. Up next, we have the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory. There we go. Okay, folks, the, now I think you're going to see the, the tiger car from the Como Park Zoo. I think that's going to be coming on screen right now. Um, they are going to be having the city council, I believe. The St. Paul City Council. And a fun fact about the St. Paul City Council is that uh, this year's elected city council is the first city council made up of entirely women. Um, and so that's a really historic thing that we've been lucky to have in our city. We're, they just were sworn in at the beginning of this month. And so we're so looking forward to their leadership. And another fun fact is I went to high school with two of our current city council members. So uh, really exciting to see that happen in St. Paul. St. Paul really is kind of a small town sometimes. I think there I think this may be the city council coming a little bit at a time. It's the office of the mayor, but the mayor's not with us. The, today. the mayor unfortunately mayor mayor uh, could not meet be here. He unfortunately had to attend a funeral today. And was had to be replaced. We miss Mayor Mayor Carter. He's a big part of. It. He is a longtime St. Paul guy. In fact, he was a junior member of the Winter uh, Winter Carnival. That is correct. I believe he is also a graduate of Central High School, who is my uh, my daughter goes. Oh, here we go. We have St. Paul Festival and Heritage Foundation President and CEO Lisa Jacobson. Lisa, Lisa it's good to see you. Tremendous job uh, leading the festival, 
fundraising, uh, doing all the work that needs to be done to put this on. So thank you to Lisa. We have the Pioneer Press coming in front of us. They were the first newspaper of Minnesota. They've been around since 1849, and they're celebrating their 175th anniversary. Proud sponsors of the Winter Carnival since its inception. Hey, I gotta just say here to my friends, this is the uh, Celebrity Grand Marshals. It's Paul Folger and Leah McLean from KSCP TV, and uh, we just want to welcome them as the Grand Marshals. Yes. KSTV uh, TV5 Eyewitness News is the news leader in the Twin Cities with Minnesota's weather authority serving as the official meteorologist of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. The parent company, Hubbard Broadcasting, just celebrated its 100th anniversary. Who are around next? I'll just jump in here. And then we got the Boy Scouts here, the, the traditional, the, the Hylex gnomes. Um, this is a long-term tradition in Winter Carnival. And uh, the Boy Scout Troop 13 are the honorees this year. And uh, we welcome them, one of the most recognizable icons of the day parade. Crystal, we've got some guys we know well up next. You want to tell us about them? Yeah. The Order of the Royal Guard. The Royal Guard is an alumni organization of men and women who have served as the King's Guard. I see our outgoing 2023 Sergeant of the Guard, Al, who was amazing. I see our Captain of the Guard. Hail the Guard. Hail the Guard. As you people probably can see, they're a very shy group. They don't like to draw attention to themselves. Oh, and I think an exciting moment is coming here in a second, as I think we're about to get our first look at the 2024 royal family. All right, well, this year, these uh, they were doing a coronation last night. So this is uh, less than 24 hours ago, but I'll just go through the first. We got King Boreas, the 88th, that's Mr. Steve Duty. Aurora, Queen of the Snows, Jennifer Waterhouse. Our prime minister, really the right arm of King Boreas is Danny Ross. Captain of the Guard is Greg DeCooster, and Sergeant of the Guard is Mark Friend. And we have the other King's Guards is Dave Sweehan, Kevin DeCooster, and Tyler Lothan. And Titan, Prince of the North Wind is Eddie Weigert. North Wind Princess, Katie Jo Johnson. Euros, Prince of the East Wind, Ron Mikolai. East Wind Princess, Michelle Boris. Prince of the West Wind, John Omt. West Wind Princess, Amy Lynn Johnson. North South Prince of the South Wind, Jamie Rood, and South Wind Princess Madeline McGarry. Congratulations to the 2024 Royal Family. And here we have a group of the former kings, queens, and prime ministers. So typically Dan and I would be on the fire truck with them, but this year they are uh, representing their past royal families, and we love having all of the kings and past kings and queens and prime ministers all together. Hail Boreas, hail the queen, hail the prime. Yes, these are, again, as Crystal said, these are all the former queens, uh, kings, and prime ministers. Uh, it's a very tight group. These people have dedicated a whole year of their life going to so many events throughout the city of Minnesota. Up next, we got everybody's favorite, the Royal Order of the Klondike Cates. She had beauty, charm, and a man who'd done her wrong. She was Kathleen Rockwell, and she made her way across the mountains of Dawson City and the gold fields around the Yukon and Klondike rivers, just as many did during the gold rush of 1898. All right, and now we have the Northwind organization. Northwind, better known as the best wind. These are former Titans and former princesses of the North Wind. These folks proudly represent St. Paul's North End. Hail Titan, hail the North Wind princesses. And hail Rice 
Street. They've also got the Rice Street royalty with them on the truck. Hail Rice Street! Folks, you're missing out if you're not down here in Rice Street or uh, Rice Park right now. It is a party atmosphere. Well, here we are again. The North Wind is the oldest brother of Boreas, and now we're getting to the. Oh, I guess we're going to the West Winds here. Normally, the East Winds are following right behind. Yeah, they're irresponsible. We never know where they're going to show up. But the West Wind, uh, here come the West Winds. These are the Cowboys representing the dependable West Wind. Uh, in the legend, the West Wind is the only brother that has never defected to the Vulcans. So these are the ones the most loyal to King Boreas. Uh, these are, uh, they just have so much fun. Uh, they are, uh, they always dress in green, Brent. For uh, those of us like Dan and I who have done a little time on the other side of the river, it's exciting to say that right now we are looking at Minneapolis Aquatennial Commodore Jason DeCooster, former West Wind Prince. In fact, I see a lot of Aquatennial on that, that boat today. I see two east winds right behind. Uh, here we are. They're the ones in uh, purple, our very own, yes. So. And we know him from 2015, Dave Metternock, rolling up with the west winds. I love it. Some east wind representation. That's awesome. Yeah. Couple west wind princesses interacting with the crowd. We love it. Yeah, so the North Winds are typically in blue, royal blue for the royal and regal North Winds. The East Winds, our irresponsible East Winds, are typically adorned in purple. Our responsible West Winds, as you just saw, are in green. And our hot and spicy South Winds, who are probably having fun somewhere else right now, maybe we'll see them in a little bit, um, are in hot and spicy red. And we love our colors in Winter Carnival and all that it represents. And I don't know if there's a color for the king and the queen, maybe gold, maybe white. I've seen a lot, you know. <laughs> yes, and typically the king and the queen are always in some sort of black or white attire. We love it. I was going to say, the, the people who I'd ask about that are actually the two people who are standing next to me and don't know the answer. Right. <laughs> so. Well, you try. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Oh, we got the bouncing, yeah. the bouncing team. Yeah. Oh, the bouncing team are fun. Yes. They are on their way. They're a little bit behind, I think. I have never been bounced. Crystal, you have, yes. I, have been, yeah, tell I have been bounced. For a long time during my year, we weren't allowed to be bounced because we were wearing crowns. So the very the second to last day of our year in 20, so this was 2016, I finally got bounced on the 5 a.m. news on TV. And I have a great picture of me in the air trying to hold my crown down and like having so much fun. So the bouncing team is so fun to watch. So they stop periodically. Uh, to do one of their bounces, and it's really fun to watch. Ooh, that was a nice twirl. <laughs> Dan, have you been bounced? You know, actually, I have too. Um, I will say that normally I love uh, uh, rides and things, but it's a little disorienting to be thrown up there like like that. But you'll see that uh, they'll have, I'm trying to think about how many people around the circle for the uh, parachute or the thing that they use to bounce, and they will count to three and then throw that person quite quite high in the air. I'm feeling a bit left out. I'm the only one up here who has not, not been bounced. <laughs> I, I want to make sure that the thing is reinforced so that when, I, when I'm caught. <laughs> See, I feel like there's, I just watched a, a young woman do a backflip there. I feel like she has some abilities that I don't think I have. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the crowd, the crowd is calling for them. These are, this is a popular group right here. Do you actually have a bounce? Oh, they're going to do one. Do we have a cage for bouncing? No. No? Hold on. Here, you step in. I'm gonna, I think we do. Awesome. 
So they hold auditions too for the bouncing team every year. I want to say during sometime around uh, mid-January. So if you're interested in being one of, I think they call them the, one of the bouncing girls, um, you can uh, look on their website and get information on how you might be able to be a part of the bouncing team. So much fun to see them. Well, next we have as, oh, there we go, one more bounce. Uh, right behind the bouncers is our South Winds. The uh, former South Winds and their families in their South Wind bus. Uh, you can see it's always rocking. They're always having a great time. Uh, support the city and Winter Carnival throughout the year, and they recruit and mentor new South Winds. Uh, again, these are the, um, they love the heat. Uh, they have, aren't what you say, Crystal, they, they lean a little towards the Balkans a little bit, right? They do, a little bit. They can be kind of, they can be hot and cold, we should say, yeah. right? They can yeah. be hot and cold. Unlike the West Winds, whose loyalty is unquestioned, yeah. the South Wind loyalty gets questioned once in a while. But we love the South Wind. They have a really fun bus, lots of South Winds. It looks like we also have some of our international visiting dignitaries on uh, the South Wind bus who are visiting us from some of the festivals that the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family also goes to visit. So, so fun to see the South Winds here today. Hail the South. And we also have coming up our St. Paul Winter Carnival Junior Royalty. So in the legend, the Junior Royalty bring the, the youth and exuberance to the festival. Our 2024 King Frost is Breck Moss. Our 2024 Princess of Snow is My Mia Noonan. Our 2024 Princess of Ice is Lily Bell. And our 2024 Queen of the Snowflakes is Kelsey Sirks. I'm going to introduce you on these. We have our visiting ambassadors coming. Krista, you spent a lot of time with these people. What do the visiting ambassadors do? Yeah, they actually have a really fun weekend. They call it Queens Weekend. So these young women are representing their cities from all around the state. They come to St. Paul for the Winter Carnival. They got to go to Coronation last night. They're gonna get a private meeting with the royal family in a couple hours. And they just get to experience the Winter Carnival. So we love that they come. Thank you for coming to St. Paul. Now, one of the questions I bet Crystal gets most often is, how does one get involved in royalty here? And a lot of people come from this group. Yeah, yeah. so a lot of people learn about the Winter Carnival Royal Family Opportunity uh, through being an other royalty program, so that's really awesome. We have Farmington here, Dan. Yeah, you know, Farmington is a great, great uh, community. They always have a float. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they, they call it the, their due days. That's their formal uh, theme. But they say we envision a world where every girl knows and activates her limitless potential and is free to boldly per, per, per pursue her dreams. But uh, Farmington is just such a great time, and uh, they're here at every uh, Grand Day Parade. Vulcan's coming behind. Oh, okay. no, oh re rematch. Dan, I think he's at one of our booths or something. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah you're right. I'm glad you. <laughs> that seems obvious now. <laughs> oh, no, and then also um, our festival chair. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Is it, oh, yeah, Michael and Kelly? Yeah, they ended up. Yeah. All right. Are they. Oh, here we go. In the re uh, Remax balloon, we have Michael and, and uh, Kelly uh, S Sawyer. <laughs> I know Michael well. <laughs> there are festival chairs this year. They worked really hard. They put on a really great show last night at Coronation. Uh, great people. Good to see them again. Uh, and it also, I will tell you guys, it always feels great when the hot air balloon comes by and you are standing in one of these cold winter uh, days. But hail the chairs. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Michael. They did such a great job. They, they, they handled Everything yeah. from the beginning to the end here, and these two dedicate a lot of their time. Yeah, this is a huge job. They did a lot Great of it. Job. And uh, yeah, last night's kind of their crowning glory when yeah, they put on that yeah. coronation, and they did a marvelous job. I happen to be sitting next to them. Um, they were not sitting around much, they were working the whole night. All right, now this is the 20 year anniversary right here. So, 20 years, this is John Bennett, the Boreas. Back then, and next, oh, in front of him now is Tommy Barrett, the Vulcan, for their years. So, uh, oh, had a phenomenal year. Prime Minister Kathy's yes, Wig. Yeah, Kathy's Wig. Yeah, Prime Minister Kathy's Wig is in that one as well. 
And next coming up, we have the 2014 Royal Family and Vulcan Crew Horse celebrating their 10 year anniversary. And actually, fun fact, it was the women who were the royal ladies in this family that encouraged me to run for Queen of the Snows. So I love these women, the, the Northwind Princess from 2014, Liz Carlson, the Southwind, Ashley Humphrey, uh, the Westwind, Abby Patterson, Queen of the Snows, Abby Hoagland. I, I just love this family. So congratulations to their, on their 10 year anniversary. Yeah, it was fun. Crystal and I followed this family, and we watched them throughout their year. They had a phenomenal year, and uh, they really inspired us. So can't believe it, Crystal. We're going to be celebrating 10 years next year. Yeah. This is our outgoing Vulcan crew. They just finished a busy year. Vulcan's also big in volunteerism. They do a lot of work around the city and they are just a fun bunch. Um, oh, I think we may also have the incoming 24. I'm reading the thing as it goes. I'm not entirely sure what they are, but they're friendly and waving. Here they, here they come. This is—I will tell you—I I have a ten-year-old son, and he enjoys every year having the, um, the uh, having a beard painted on him by the Vulcans. <laughs> truck is uh, called Laverne, Laverne. and uh, Laverne is the uh, their official vehicle and their official float so we enjoy the Vulcans very much. All right and next we have the St. Paul chapter of World Apostolate of Fatima. Um, at the heart of the Catholic community the Knights of Columbus um, this is a St. Paul seminary. Uh, they are dedicated to the ideals of service, education, and spiritual growth. And they inspire hearts to shape the future, always with an eye towards compassion and service. Thank you so much for being here. We have the Aquatennial Seniors, Clayton, Shirley, Cheryl, and Kathleen. You know, and next after them, we have what we call the International Visiting Royalty. Now, I'm going to give you the quick places they're from, from Bradenton, Florida, Winnipeg, Canada, Aberdeen, South Dakota, the Wild West from Riverton, Wyoming, uh, Fiesta in Antonio, Texas. So all these folks come and enjoy our festival as Winter Carnival goes and enjoy theirs. Oh, and who do we have here from, uh, yes. Yeah, we have Lacrosse Oktoberfest. Uh, so one fun thing about the royal family is that they travel to many festivals that we call our sister festivals throughout their year. So the Winter Carnival Royal Family goes to Lacrosse Oktoberfest, and in turn they come visit us here in St. Paul. So it's so fun. Uh, next, it looks like we've got the Denfeld High School uh, marching band. Fun fact, I actually used to work at Denfeld High School with their trio program, so so fun that these folks came all the way down from Duluth, Minnesota to join us. There are 30 of them this year. They're quite, they're well represented. Oh, and right behind them, I must say, Brent, we've got two golfers. They represent our iconic Minnesota State Fair. Uh, the Minnesota State Fair is always the end of August, first part of September and uh, the two golfers represent that great celebration as well. Oh, here, there's a state fair. There's, yeah, we must have. Yeah, we're a few behind. We have St. Paul Regional Labor Federation, AFL-CIO, Unites more than 50,000 uh, union members in Ramsey, Washington, Dakota, and Chisago counties. Uh, although the work that union members do has changed, their commitment to improving the communities is constant. Greater Twin Cities United Way and Organized Labor have partnered together for more than 60 years to make the community a great place to live, work, and thrive. We have Hammernick Exploring uh, Solutions. Hammernick is a big sponsor of St. Paul Winter Carnival. 
uh, there's they're a um, stop by their entertainment chalet located in Rice Park. It's right across the uh, the road from us here. You know, Brent, I just want to say that uh, Hammernick's uh, Aboreus 2013. Uh, Ted Natus uh, is an owner of Hamrix, a big supporter of Winter Carnival. As you mentioned, for all your flooring needs, you could go to Hamrix, and they they do so much for the community and so much for Winter Carnival. Who we got here? I thought he did them. I could, I could. You got some? Yeah. We've got a few more of our union, our state union groups who are coming through. Um, ATU 1005. International Alliance, Theatrical and Stage Employees, and uh, Minnesota Association of Professional Employees, which I am also a proud member. I'm a proud mate member. Love, love that we have them here celebrating the St. Paul Winter Carnival. We got Albertville coming. Yeah. Here, why don't you take Albertville? Okay. All right, and coming around the corner, we have Albertville, the royalty program. Albertville has a year-round royalty program. Uh, and they also participate in the Minneapolis Aquatennial as well as the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Junior and senior girls compete for the crown of Miss Albertville. Albertville residents can meet the royalty candidates on Tuesdays. Uh, this is such a great community, and they're involved throughout the state. So welcome, Albertville. All right. Next, we have Junk Masters, fast, friendly, professional junk removal. Junk Masters is locally owned and operated. They provide full service junk removal to Minneapolis and the Twin Cities metro area. And you know, that's something we probably don't think about on a daily, that you know, every so often you might be doing a remodeling project and need something to be picked up and taken away from your home or hauled away. This is a great service that you can call 612-516-JUNK. Love it. Good way to get rid of that old couch that is no longer a value. That is the nightmare when one of those is stuck in your house. Oh, look, Albertville's still in front of us. It's really hard not to know Albertville. Yeah. Somehow they, they are a big yeah. part of this community. They really are. They really yeah. are. I look in there and realize I know those faces in that car still, <laughs> even after a number of years. We did that. It must be. You want to do Western Saddle Club? Sure. All right. Coming around the corner here, we have the Western Saddle Club Association. They have some lovely royalty who have joined us on their float. Uh, Queen Raina Benson, Princess Sarah Schwartz, Ms. Horsemanship Natalie Stephenson, and Ms. Games and Ms. Congeniality Courtney Betch. Their mission is to provide safe and enjoyable experiences to all participants of equestrian activities to promote good horsemanship and sportsmanship skills and practices. And you can check them out at www.wsca.org. Dan, up next is a group you've been trying to get into for years. You know, thank you for passing it over to me, Brett. Perfect timing. This is the um, tuxedo team, but the real word is they're affectionately known as the pooper scoopers. Uh, anytime we have uh, animals in the parade, they always follow up, but they have so much fun. Um, I must I must do the next one if that's okay. Uh, you know, we've got a truck, an iconic truck, and it's a Blaze Credit Union, uh, an organization I'm proud to be a part of. But uh, anyways, we got a 1952, 1952 Ford pickup truck, and uh, Blaze is always a part of Winter Carnival. And we just love being a part of giving back and making a difference. And oh yeah, so they gave me a special high. So we just love that, and uh, we're just super excited to have them here. So uh, that's all great. Thank you. Yeah, we didn't have any notes from that group. They just they didn't turn anything in. And I thought, well, I guess we'll ask some guy named Stoltz. We have Mauer GMC here. The team at Mauer GMC would like to welcome you to their dealership in Invergrove Heights where they're confident you'll find the vehicle you're looking for at a price you can afford. Come and check out our full selection of new GMC vehicles or get a great deal on a reliable pre-owned model. Uh, they're probably having a big week. There was a fellow named Maurer from around this area 
that I think had kind of a big week this Boy, week. Hall of Famer Joe Maurer, yeah, was just put into the Hall of Fame with uh, three other Minnesotans, so a really big week. So, yeah, Maurer, GMC, thank you. And next we have Kao Li Tao. Kao Li Tao was the designer of this year's 2024 Winter Carnival button. Uh, Kao, Kao Li's journey as an artist is deeply rooted in her St. Paul upbringing, particularly in the vibrant neighborhood of Frogtown. From her earliest days, the Winter Carnival held a special place in her heart, even after her family relocated to Savage. They continue to come and visit the Winter Carnival, and I love this. I'm also a Frogtown girl, and so I love seeing folks from the community really come and be invested in the Winter Carnival. And the buttons are beautiful. We have St. Michael Royalty next. They're another big part of this community. Uh, they are excited to be in St. Paul celebrating the coolest celebration on Earth. Uh, and they are, they have members joining us today, Commodore Eli, Junior Commodore Alex, and Little Miss Rosie. Look for Miss St. Michael Maggie as she walks through the parade with the visiting royalty. Join them in August for St. Michael Days and Nights Festival. That's a good looking float. Whoa, suddenly we're live. St. Michael's, you fixed everything for us. <laughs> And the first, all right, all right. Hey, the next we have Union Depot is going to the dogs here, literally. But hey, we just want to say thank you, Doggy Depot. Uh, they offer over 50 plus rescues and dog themed vendors. So uh, great work that you do. Thank you for being a part of Winter Carnival. I got the shrine there. Looks, yep. Thank you, Animal Rescue. We have the Shriners coming out of the Osman Shrine, the mission statement of the Osman Shriners for the 2024 Winter Carnival Parade. At the Osman uh, Shriners, our mission is to actively engage in enriching community experiences while upholding our values of fraternity, fun, and philanthropy. As we participate in the 2024 Winter, Winter Carnival Parade, our aim is to bring joy, entertainment, and community spirit to the streets of St. Paul. We, com uh, we commit to showcasing our diverse range of units, including our motorcycle units, go-karts, clowns, pipe bands, and Chang the Dragon. As a testament to our dedication and to creativity, uh, creativity and communal engagement, our involvement in this historic event reflects our enduring commitment to community participation and charitable work especially in support of the Shriners Hospitals and Children and the Twin Cities Children's Clinic. And here we also have the uh, St. Paul Osmond Shrine Circus, which is the longest continuously running Shrine Circus in America. Performances are at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds this March 28th and 34th. You want, gotta go out and see the Shrine Circus. Established in 1886, Osmond Shriners have a long-standing history of community involvement and philanthropy. Based in Egan, Minnesota, they have been a vibrant part of the local culture, offering a wide array of, of activities, including their traditional parading season, as we're seeing here, family barbecues, 5K runs, and more. For the 2024 Winter Carnival Parade, Osmond Triners are excited to participate in the King Boreas Grand Day Parade. This parade is a highlight uh, for the Winter Carnival, and in a, this event began um, at, in 1886, and we kind of all know a little bit of the history of the Winter Carnival, that we had some reporters who said that St. Paul was a Siberia, and so we love that the Shriners know that history and are here to celebrate with us today. You know, there's so many groups that the uh, Osmonds do, the Shriners, and we just want to thank them. They've got like the Drum and Bugle Corps, the Osmond Cycle Corps, what you'll see here today, and the Osmond Mighty Mites. Uh, you'll see they have lots of different street rods, 
uh, micro cup cars, as you see here out here. Uh, in 2018, they took first place in the showmanship category at the Midwest Shrine Association meeting. Uh, they do figure eights, crisscrosses, and so much more. And we just want to say thank you to the Shriners and all the great work that they do for our community and for the kids. They really are a group we should all be supporting. These are people who raise money to help sick kids. Michael Meyer, serving as the illustrious potentate of the Osmond Shriners, plays a crucial role in leading the fraternity and its charitable endeavors. The potentate is responsible for overseeing the Shriners' activities, ensuring they align with the organization's mission of fraternity, fun, and philanthropy. Under his leadership, Osmond Shriners continue their dedicated support uh, for the Shriners Hospitals for Children, a network of healthcare facilities focused on providing specialized care for children. Oh, I think we got a fun group of Shriners coming now. We got some four wheelers coming our way. If you guys don't think this is tough, try doing this with your cars on your drive home. Something to know about the Shriners, which is really commendable, is that all the services uh, that are provided are provided at no charge. Um, and this is actually the longest running Shrine Circus in America. Uh, they perform at the Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. Their upcoming performance is March 28th through the 31st. So in a couple months from now, Almost exactly two months from now, you will have the opportunity to see them live and in person performing. We thank them so much for joining the St. Paul Winter Carnival King Boreas Grand Day Parade. This part really is a treat for any parade. These guys are very entertaining. Looks like we have one more. We have the Alexandria Shriners with the uh, 1923. Uh, 23 Circus Calliope. They're heading out in front of us right now. Hi guys. Thanks for coming to the Winter Carnival. I think there's a pipe organ uh, player in the back there, That's right? Good. Yeah. I think we have a pipe organ in the back uh, of this great uh, Alexander Shriners. And then following them, uh, coming around from the corner, we have a longtime uh, supporter here. Uh, this is the Woodbury Ambassadors. The Woodbury Ambassador Royal Family has been in existence for over 35 years. Uh, the candidates are selected as members of the Royal Family based on communication skills, volunteering and service efforts, and leadership abilities. Uh, these uh, young ladies uh, do such a great job. And you can see our Woodbury folks right here. We're loud and proud. Way to go, Woodbury. Always so glad that you're here. I do want to say that Woodbury Days uh, will be August 23rd through 25th. Uh, please come out and support them. And next we have, coming around the corner here, the St. Paul Yacht Club. Founded in 1912, the St. Paul Yacht Club is celebrating 112 years in St. Paul this year, which is amazing. They are dedicated to safe and affordable boating for the citizens of St. Paul and surrounding communities. The St. Paul Yacht Club is located in St. Paul's premier public park, Harriet Island. Another absolute icon of St. Paul, the Yacht Club. I'm worried this about to come. <laughs> too. Yes, and following the Yacht Club, we have the Pepper Fest. What a great group. This is out of North Hudson. Uh, the Pepper Fest is a little village celebration with a big Italian flavor. 
Uh, it celebrates a strong Italian heritage with a three-day festival. Uh, they host royalty in a championship. Spaghetti eating, Crystal, we've done that before. And hot pepper eating. So if you like hot peppers, uh, make sure you get out to Pepper Fest. We want to again welcome our Wisconsin Hudson friends and thank you for being here. You're awesome. Yes, that pepper eating contest was really, was really stressful. I remember it was a very warm day, lots of spaghetti, lots of sauce, but a good memory. Yeah, all of you who think a spaghetti eating contest sounds easy, try it. Yeah. I've done it too. I put that down thinking maybe that was it, but they're not even on. They, I don't think they can do them. I think next here we have Great Wolf Lodge, perhaps. When you're looking for the ultimate family getaway, their resort has it all. A 75,000 square foot indoor water park, kept at a warm 84 degrees year round, fun attractions and events, dining options to please every palate, and more. Experience a world of play all under one roof. My kids love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it too, Brent. How about you? You gone down a few slides here and there and there? I've been known to do a water slide, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the fake nurse I've seen. In Frogtown's not happening. Yeah. So I bet this is Invergrove Heights coming. Yeah. yeah. You can Okay, next we have the Invergrove Heights Scholarship Program coming around the corner. This is a nonprofit organization that provides service to the community as well as scholarships to its royal court. We have here Miss Invergrove Heights, Kiana, Junior Miss Cheyenne and Junior Miss Lily, and little Mrs. Reagan, Alice, and Greta. Thank you all for coming to the St. Paul Winter Carnival, King Boreas Grand Day Parade. Dan and I remember coming to uh, your coronation and your parade. It happened sometime in September from what I can remember and, and enjoyed our time in your community. So thank you so much for coming. Hey, next we have the St. Paul Hiking and Walking Club. Hey, welcome for welcome and glad you're here. Hey, if you enjoy the outdoors, like viewing scenery, the progression of local architecture, and just want to share the company with others who desire staying physically fit, hey, our club might be right for you. You're 18 or older, you're welcome. And this is your invitation. There's no fee for guests. <clears throat> Besides all that, we have fun, fun together. So thank you for being here. Love it. I'll, I'll draw the short straw. I'll give this one a shot. <laughs> we have the Stiff Stungs Fest Ambassador Program from Norwood Young America coming here. Their, uh, their celebration is August 22nd to 25th, and they link their past with their present and future. This is a 163-year-old celebration. Welcome, people. Next, we have the Authentic Beauty Pageant of Minnesota. Authentic Beauty Pageant seeks to empower and encourage princesses, girls who are age 12 and under, and beauties age 13 and older to embrace their inner beauty, to dream big, and believe that inner beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Thank you all for being here. All right, you see this white vehicle with Santa Claus on top, the sleigh bell dancers. Let's give it up for the sleigh bell dancers. 
All right, they're a volunteer dance line that performs throughout the metro area during the holiday season to spread holiday cheer and make spirits bright. Hey, thank you, Sleigh Bell dancers. You're awesome. Oh, I don't know this group. This, yeah. <laughs> this one's going to her. Next, we've got the group that's here to scare the children. Crystal, if you can help us. All right. We have got coming down uh, the way Minnesota Krampus. Wow. Look, look at all of these costumes. I mean, it's like <laughs> Minnesota Krampus <laughs> is a local 501c3 educational nonprofit uh, that shows the Austrian tradition of St. Nicholas and his Krampus. In this culture, St. Nick comes on December 6th and gives treats and small presents to good boys and girls. Check out their website or social media for events and how to apply for their annual scholarship. This is wonderful. I mean, look at these costumes, and yet they're also giving scholarships to youth. I love it. And folks, coming up in the rear here, we have Cottage Grove Strawberry Feast. The Strawberry Fest is planned by an all-volunteer committee whose mission is to bring the community together. At the event, residents, businesses, city government, and nonprofit organizations all come together to proudly celebrate the Cottage Grove community. Thank you, ladies. I think they're playing for us. Yes. They're fiddling on there. Folks, thanks for coming out to join us for the 2024 Grand Day Parade. Enjoy all the St. Paul Winter Carnival festivities. Go party in Rice Park, and we hope to see you here a week from now for the Torchlight Parade. Have a good one. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Crystal. It was a blast. Thank you, Dan. Hail Boreas, hail the Queen, hail the 2024 St. Paul Winter Carnival.